Hello everyone and good afternoon and a warm welcome to all participants and jury members to Dubai of the AIM Startups Virtual Pitch Competition 2020. My name is Isa Lois and I will be your host for today. Let me first start off by saying thank you to all the participants for patiently waiting for today's competition. As we all know, the competition was originally scheduled to be held in March as a physical competition and was since postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak and the nationwide lockdown. On behalf of the co-organizer Lead Tech, we are pleased to resume our partnership with AIM and the Ministry of the Economy of the United Arab Emirates in our journey to discover disruptive companies and competitive solutions within the Dubai startup ecosystem. AIM, short for the annual investment meeting, is the largest investment platform in the world. As an initiative of the UAE's Ministry of Economy, AIM has been promoting a healthier global economy by linking investment opportunities to fast-growing economies under several key pillars. Foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, small and medium enterprise, future cities, one belt, one road, and startups, which is our key focus for today. We are excited to listen to each of the nine shortlisted applicants showcase their company's products and solutions as they compete for a chance to represent Dubai at the final AIM 2020 Global Startups Champions League in Dubai later this year. Before we begin, allow me to first introduce the members of our jury panel for today's competition. Our first jury is Mr. Kelvin Shikizi, Chief Executive Officer, Co-Founder of Digital Growth Boost Oil and Director of Startup Grind Hilston Key. Third is Mr. Hans Henrik Christensen, Vice President of Dubai Technology Entrepreneur Campus. And our third jury is Engineer Muhammad Jamal Al Sati, Director General of ISDB Group Regional Hub. To all the jury members, thank you so much for carving out time for your busy schedules to be part of this competition. Before we hand over the floor to our presenter, let us recap on the format and rules of the pitching competition. First, each startup will be given five minutes for the pitch, followed by another five minutes Q&A session with our panel of juries. Second, Timekeeping time for pitch and Q&A session will be managed via chat box and timekeeping for both will be managed by the organizers. Third, kindly refrain from posting any messages, including promotional materials in the chat room unless you're a jury member or part of the organizing team. Fourth, in order to ensure minimal disruption throughout the competition, keep yourself on mute at all times unless you are the speaker. Fifth, scoring by the juries for each startup will take place right after each presentation and Q&A session. Jury members, as soon as you are done scoring the company, please post a message stating done in the chat room. And finally, the overall scores will be tallied up at the end of the competition, followed by an announcement of the overall winner and national champion during the closing segment of the competition. If any participants happen to came across any technical difficulties, please do refresh your web browser or log out and log back in again. Otherwise, please switch to another web browser. The, web, the platform is supported by Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Microsoft Edge. Without further ado, let us begin with the competition. For our first contestant, we have referability, which will be presented by Mr. Clements Melki. Mr. Clements, please be on the stage. Yes, you can see the screen. Yes. So time. Presentation. All right, the floor is yours and good luck. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'm going to pitch referability today. In a nutshell, what we are doing is paying people for referring friends to great jobs. The reason why we're doing this is because conventional recruitment tools are not able to engage with passive talent, um, usually because it looks like this. Either you have thousands of applications for a job that is posted a few hours ago, and there's a very slow chance that you're actually gonna get selected, or you will have to go to an ATS, an online application, which takes you 40 minutes, again, just to not hear back from the employer. 
um, when you're really good at what you're doing, you're unlikely to be out of a job. And when you have a job, you're unlikely to search and apply for a new one. This summarizes what passive talent is. So if you look at a typical career, there are long periods of passive employment and short stints of active job search. So for instance, it would be like this. On the top, we have people who are employed. On the bottom, we are looking for a new job. Every career is different, but usually it's the same. There's very long periods where we are not looking actively, and then there are shorter periods where we are considering reaching out for a new job. Um, in HR, or as we see here, the uh, periods are quite shorter. Um, and in HR, we call those people passive talent and active candidates. Passive talent makes up 70% of the global workforce. So it's more than, or it's two out of three candidates. However, 85% of them would be open to new opportunities, but those opportunities have to be brought to them. And we do this to the crowd with referability. The way it works is that the employer posts their job for free. And when they post, they allocate a reward. Now, anyone can earn the reward by referring someone who's getting hired by the employer. The referral process, we basically um, advertise the role on social media. So we build an audience of relevant people and then we, we put it into the social media feed, be it LinkedIn or Facebook or uh, Instagram, whatever social media those people are using. Uh, and anyone can do the referral. It's super easy. You just go on your phone, you uh, provide us with the name and the email of the candidate. And the candidate then receives an email where they just have to upload their CV and then confirm that they want to be referred to the job. And this is how easy we make it for people. So it's literally just a click of a button. The employer and the referrer can see the whole process on a Kanban dashboard like this, where they can easily manage their uh, referrals and the candidates that they have received. And we offer three month uh, placement guarantees. So you only pay when the candidate joins you and the money only leaves your e-wallet when you are happy after 90 days. Referability takes a 40% commission on every position that we close. Um, this is our team. We are located in DTEC. Uh, so I, I have initially founded a company. Um, I'm coming from a recruitment background. Khadija joined me in uh, last year. Uh, she's doing the communications and corporate uh, marketing. And Zhao is our CTO who is relatively recent, uh, become an equity holder. Um, this is a little bit of a comparison about the other um, um, tools recruiters have. We usually beat all of them both in quality and price. Uh, in terms of market size, we are handling global positions, including Canada, Ukraine, India, and so on. But our main focus is the GCC, where we have quite a lot of roads posted at our mid and senior level jobs that we are concentrating on. Uh, in terms of timeline, we have launched in September 2018. We have had several uh, iterations and revamps. Um, we made our first 10,000 uh, US dollars revenue in the summer of 2019. And currently we're working on expanding uh, to, to uh, Saudi Arabia. And here are a few metrics about um, the revenue we've had so far, the average reward that is posted uh, for every job as well as the pipeline that we have. This was all pre-COVID. Um, obviously with COVID, the recruitment industry has taken quite a hit. So we are still in the process right now to recover, but we are on track. And that would be my pitch for today. Thank you so much for your presentation comments. Okay, um, you can stop your presentation now. I'd like to call on the jury members to be on the stage for the Q&A session. Okay, can anyone ask of the jury ask question now? Yes, Mr. Hans, would you like to do the to give the first question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good to good to hear from you, Clemens, again. <laughs> uh, we have <laughs> run into each other a few times. Uh, nice presentation. I wanted to ask you: so, what do you see yourself as? Uh, what type of company do you see yourself as today? Because you, you're not just an HR executive search company, right? No, so we, we concentrate on all kinds of roles. So we handle junior to mid to senior to C-level roles. Um, usually we get like mid-management assignments onwards. Um, the important thing for us is that we are not a recruitment agency or we are not actually recruiting. We are using or we are facilitating the power of the crowd because 
everyone knows people and you can leverage your network and make money through it by doing the referrals. And we are basically um, not really specializing on a certain industry or, or on a certain geography. We handle all types of roles. Um, it is always talent acquisition that we do. Um, and we like we are positioned in a, in a very niche and novel way between job boards and recruitment agencies and executive search firms. So we take um, components of all of them, but we usually offer a service that is either cheaper or has a better quality for the employer in the end. Okay. And uh, so would you say um, you can uh, disrupt the, the industry in this respect? Or, or I do believe so. Yeah, I do believe so, because I, I come from an HR background myself, and it is very often that the best people that you can hire are already employed with your competition. Like the fact that they are employed with your competition makes them just the more relevant for you, because they know the market, they know the industry, they know all of the people that you that, that, that they need to know in order to succeed in your own company. But the problem with recruitment nowadays is that you have so many different job boards where the candidate has to spend a lot of time and effort in actually sending a single application. Mm -hmm. And then again, there's a very high chance that as a candidate, you don't hear back from the employer. It's also my research topic for my doctorate right now. Um, and the risk reward dynamics for, for conventional job postings are, is off. And that's why they don't really work. Um, I mean, they, they do work in a way of that, yes, eventually you're going to find a candidate, but are you really going to find the best candidate available in the market? And the answer is usually no, because they're already working and they have better things to do than spending several hours a day in applying to jobs. Like so many people are saying applying for a new job is like a job in itself. Okay, thank you. Do we have more time for another question? Yes, we have three minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you so much, Clemens. Uh, that was a really nice pitch. So I have one question. You know, when you talk about job application, there's always a lot of people applying to a specific job, which gives the recruiter this uh, feeling of overwhelming. That's why most times they don't contact those that apply because maybe there are too many. So how does your system sort out like qualified, like pre-qualified can candidates to make it easy for the recruiters to only focus on the most important C CVs that they need to check instead of going through all the CVs of both qualified and underqualified candidates. Thank you. Right. So we have we have both technical solutions as well as non-technical solutions to this. Like on the very offset, if you don't have a placement, like if I refer a friend, but my friend is not hired, I'm not getting anything out of it. Um, I would just waste my time. So that's the first point of us actually getting a lot of uh, qualified referrals. The other point is that we have an algorithm. So we basically scan every referral based on the salary expectation, the job title that they have, the industry experience, the years of experience, the skill set, and so on. And we make a pre-selection for the employer to say, hey, those are, those are candidates that are really, really good. And we are also offering premium job posts. So if an employer is saying, look, I would like to have someone from the referability team to screen the candidates that are coming in and shortlist the ones that you know you think are the best, then we offer this as a premium service. However, due to the concept that we have, we are not reaching those crazy numbers where you get hundreds of applications or hundreds of referrals for a single job post. So our average is between 15 to 35 referrals and we actually want to keep it like this um, and one of the reasons is also because when we advertise the role we are not doing general advertisements so we are not just like spamming it on social media but we are building an audience so lawyers no lawyers uh, dentists no other dentists and so on so we are only advertising it to to people who are who are very likely to know someone relevant for that job perfect thank you so much for the answer Thank you so much, Mr. Kevin. It's time is up. So, uh, Mr. Mohammed, uh, I'm not sure if you have a quick question, because actually, yeah, quick one. Just all right, quick one. Uh, Clippers, thank you. Uh, now, with COVID-19, do you consider COVID-19 and the post-COVID-19 as a threat or an opportunity for you? 
Um, it is. It is both. To be honest, it's uh, the the question or the answer is depending on how we position ourselves. We have seen a, a very strong rise in in, in technical talent. Um, so beforehand, and we still are relatively industry agnostic, meaning that we just we deal with every industry and geography. However, we are shifting now more towards uh, tech roles, innovation roles, and startup roles. So there is there is a very high demand for 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 developers. Uh, graphic designers and so on. Um, for us, it or like for, for our employees, it depends on the employees we have. If it doesn't matter for them whether they are physically in the office or they are working remotely, we can still gather to these jobs. And it is it is still a very novel approach to recruitment. So it might be a little bit early to say, but generally speaking, I think it is more shift in industries and not a general threat to uh, recruitment as such. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clemens, and thank you for the questions, juries. You may now start scoring referability, and please drop a message done in the chat box once uh, you finish scoring in the portal. Thank you.
to check for Mr. Hans and Mr. Mohammed. Um, are you done scoring referability? Yeah, I wrote in the uh, in the chat uh, privately to the AIM team. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm also done, and I put okay. done, but I did not know how to send it because I just only put save. I was not sure how it was. Uh, it will be sent, but it was done. All right. Good. So if possible, um, let's send it to everyone. You can change it, address it to everyone, so everyone would be notified oh, when sure. all the sure. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the second presenter. And it will be presented by Mr. Ivan Palomino, Project Bizern. Mr. Ivan, the stage is yours, and good luck. Thank you. My name is Ivan, and I'm the co-founder of Bizern. We aim to revolutionize the way people learn and thrive in the workplace. We live in a polarized world with a different perspective on the same problem. More than 45% of employees have growing concerns over stress, motivation, and purpose. In the other hand, corporations are worried on the challenge of upskilling or training their employees that are not always at their best. Corporations also worry about the financial impact of decreasing well-being, making people being at work without being productive. Today, the options to upskill an organization that actually practice what they learn is inefficient and costly. I would like to introduce you to the Besson app, a platform to empower employees to learn and take actions on their productivity and mental well-being. Let me tell you how it works. I will our algorithm matches specific goals with micro learnings. It is daily, short, and engaging. You start practicing micro habits to help you implement a new behavior. You track your progress on your goals and the state of mind. And finally, you can reach out at any time a real coach to support your change. It only takes five minutes every day during 10 days to start implementing a new behavior. Well, the time for long and ineffective training is over. The opportunity in the market of training and development is huge. In the UAE alone, it is approximately 2.6 billions of dollars that are spent in trainings. Our addressable market represents our focus on behavioral change skills and mental well being, representing $1.1 billion. Our plan is to commercialize in a monthly subscription starting as of $49 per month per user, which makes it three times cheaper compared to any current option. In the last 1.5 years, we have validated our learning methodology based on neuroscience by actually commercializing our programs outside of our app. We have already satisfied customers. In the last four months, we have developed our app with the support of the Ma'an a UAE-based social incubate, incubator. Our learning methodology based on behavioral science has got traction with more than 7,000 learners through our online programs. In the app, we have a freemium model that allows our customers to use the app and get a taste of a new way of learning. If we look at the market, the market in the Middle East is 95% covered by traditional training centers. The world is moving tech. New commerce based mainly in the US and UK have similar models to ours and venture capitalists have started to heavily fund these new commerce. In terms of growth, we expect to cross the $1 million within 12 months exclusively through programs sold in our app. You may wonder, hey, why would I believe that these guys from Besson can make it? I have personally 15 years of senior corporate experience in market and technology. Uh, my co-founder, Elena Agarigomova, has experience in higher education and is one of the most reputable talent development advisors in the Middle East. It also helps that we have a five years friendship. What we're looking for is to have access, an access network. We are also looking to, uh, to have $100,000 to further develop our minimum viable product, providing predictive data that would make this app more much more uh, awesome, and to expand our workforce in the area of customer acquisition, helping us reach our first 1,000 paid subscription within the next seven months. Thank you very much for your time.
Thank you so much for your presentation. Okay, so I believe you are done with your presentation. Mr. Muhammad, would you like to give the first question? Yes, uh, thank you, Ivan, and uh, good luck uh, to you and, uh, and in the establishment. My first question is, um, can you elaborate on who are your competitors in, in, in this area? So we have, uh, in, in, in the UAE or in the Middle East as such, we have all of these training centers. Some of these training centers have, uh, because specifically about COVID, they have moved into well-being. In the US and the UK, we have companies like BetterUp that recently have received 100 million in order to develop the, the scale of the product outside of the US. And we have also the Mind Gym, which is a, a, a platform that is upscaling from the UK. Thank you. Uh, another question is, you talk about you need 100,000, again, to, to develop the business further. Now, uh, what about scaling up with this 100,000? How do you envisage scaling up? So, what I, what I mentioned during uh, uh, my presentation is the fact that we have already customers where we have been selling already our programs based on neuroscience applied to learning. Uh, we have already a base of customers in the, in the Middle East. They are, most of them are global, uh, global customers. And what we have is also that we have consistently have been growing our database in direct contact. We have a database of approximately 7,000 HR people with whom we have been interacting like, through webinars, through uh, newsletters uh, in a constant basis. So our name has become uh, a little bit more known since the, the last 12 months. Thank and you. This is how we, we, we plan to reach them. Good. Thank you. I'll pass it on. Hi. Can I ask a question now? Yes, yes. Kelvin. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, I actually have two questions. One of them was touched a bit uh, before now. So the first one is you talked about the 100,000 that you need, but you also mentioned that you want to use it to develop the MVP. But at the same time, you mentioned that you already have customers. So this 100,000, is it going to be to scale or to develop an MVP? What exactly will you use it for? Okay, sorry, because that, that's the part that was a little bit confusing. We have a, a working MVP that we are currently testing with approximately 80 customers, non-paid customers, in order to validate the next iteration of our, uh, our product. In the past, in the last, uh, because we founded uh, Besson approximately one year and a half ago, we were just selling programs without the app to customers. So programs that are based in, in behavioral science, which means basically you learn, you acquire the knowledge and you practice what you learn. And we have been, I mean, we are quite unique in the Middle East selling these programs of, uh, that is about applying what you learn in terms of soft skills and well-being. Perfect. That answers the question. My last question, who is your main target audience? Is it the employers or the employees? The employers. It's a B2B business. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Hans? Yeah, just a quick question. I, I saw that you're, you're ramping up a perfect uh, a hockey stick. Uh, as a matter of fact, a very, very steep one. Uh, and so what do you, um, um, how much uh, money do you anticipate uh, that you need to attract in order to reach that goal? Very, very ambitious goal. I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't really understand the question. How much money do I need or how much, mo how much revenue do I, uh, do I forecast to have within the next 12 months? How much money do you need in order to uh, ramp up your sales so ambitiously? So I need approximately $100,000. Now, if I don't have the $100,000, it will take me just a little bit more of time. In order to have within 12 months of my first 2,000 customers, I would, I would need $100,000 because that will help me to have a, a workforce to do the customer acquisitions and also to do something that, it was, that is quite promising. There is so much data that I can have from the users and I can predict, in fact, where does it go in terms of in terms of well-being, and where does it go in terms of the needs of to reach a specific soft skills. 
and this is something that is quite uh, quite ambitious in the, uh, indeed. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, jury members. Let's proceed to the scoring. Jury members, please uh, write down done in the chat room once done scoring. Thank you, Mr. Ivan, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. You're done scoring. I'm done. Okay, great. Let's move. Thank you so much, Ivan. Let's move on to the third presenter, Art Smiley. The presenter's name, Mr. Lord Alam. All the best and good luck. Sir Lord? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Lur Dalam. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Art Smiley. So Art Smiley is a multi-sided online marketplace. Uh, um, just before I go into more details, I would like to tell you a story of a friend and colleague uh, called Santosha. He's a fine artist um, and he has a brilliant skill of artworks as a realistic artist but he left art as a profession and joined as a fabricator. I mean, one of the reasons he left this because whole year, around the year he worked hard and he couldn't be able to earn less than $5,000. Like Santosh, many of the artists have similar problems. You know, they are from rural parts of the world, different part of the world that they are from, belong to, but they don't know how to showcase their work and market themselves and gain the necessary exposure. On the other hand of the Coin, you know, finding affordable and unique pieces of artwork is a major concern to the art buyers, especially high net worth individuals and millennials who are more buying online. Also, there are no economical options uh, to decorate the walls on a regular basis uh, for those customers, uh, you know, especially hospitality industry who want to decorate their walls, no economical options on the original paintings. So good news is ArtSmiley addressing these problems where uh, ArtSmiley is a multi-sided online platform where artists and art buyers can connect 24 by seven. And uh, in a nutshell, we consider ourselves as uh, Amazon of artworks. How our product works, yeah, we have 
multi-sided as i mentioned artists can upload their work and uh, you know the curator it goes into the curator approval before it matching into the potential buyer on the other side the buyers can search and select their favorite painting it can deliver to their doorsteps without any hassle we provide all kinds of paintings from uh, you know um, from abstract to figurative to illustrate you all kinds of paintings we provide our services are mainly you know original artworks and the art prints and art rentals which is a unique product in the region the art market is very uh, globally very attractive in 2019 it's a 64.1 billion dollars the total value uh, and registered 40.5 million transactions which is highest in a decade and 2% uh, higher than the previous year in which online market is around 5.9 billion dollars approximately 9% art smiley is aiming uh, 59 million dollars of revenue in the next 5 years making 37000 transactions and online market is expected to grow over 15% every year until it get double these numbers of pre covid and it's now more much rapid growth in this industry and we have uh, competitors different parts of the world uh, especially mainly european uh, and us based competitors and art smiley differentiating uh, by providing some of the additional features which our competitors are not doing like we are going into the local communities and rural areas uh, and having partnerships with the artists showcasing a very unique and unknown uh, artwork and we are also introducing art rentals as uh, some of our competitive advantages as said we are first to market in art rentals in the whole middle east and africa region and uh, also we are having as i mentioned previously partnerships with the local communities and colleges to showcase some unique uh, uh, talented of art to artists around the world and our platform is user friendly and we also have regional advantage know the culture and, and we represent uh, the local clients needs and also we have plans to adopt uh, good technologies like ar and vr and ai to bring into our platform to authenticate artwork so how our business we make money we take a commission on every transaction we take we do on our platform and offline online and we take 35% commission on all of the art rentals and art prints and original paintings we sell and 25% commission on uh, services which is our uh, you know framing companies and printing companies we work with the traction to date we have uh, we have 1300 registered artists from over uh, 50 countries and we have partnerships with uh, b2b clients over 100 customers and up to 100k of revenues you can see we are working with uh, hotels uh, and also infrastructure companies in the region so we are a team of four people and led by me um, and i have over 20 years of experience and each one of my team has around 12 to 15 years experience in their domain and managing the roles we have uh, vikash is our art consultant and curator he plays a great role in making sure we have the good quality of artwork showcased in our platform and we are uh, with the availability of funding we are expected to make a uh, uh, billion dollars of year one revenue to up to 60 million dollars with a compound annual growth rate of revenues in 131% and 105% in profits so what we are looking is actually a uh, 750k of investment uh, to achieve 1200 transactions in art smiley or next 12 months of operations uh, that is equate to around 2 million dollars this investment will be used uh, in developing the new technologies and app and also more of uh, you know sales and marketing and hire of critical resources uh, to make the business and the goals achieved thank you thank you so much for your presentation may i call on the jury to be on the stage uh, mr mohammed would you like to give the first That's question i'm yeah, stuck yeah exactly thank you very much for the presentation uh, you, can you tell us uh, who are yeah, the the i would say partners that you depend on on your supply and how reliable it is Are they, and okay. you look into any risk in in this area? Yeah, I mean we are actually partnering with artists and uh, you know like um, auction houses and the mainly the coming from the sources as artworks. So these is coming from the local communities and universities. We're bringing the fresh, fresh talent of artists into our uh, this thing. That's our main goal. So the risk in terms of we don't maintain any stocks or anything. We don't keep any inventory of uh, uh, this thing. so we directly work uh, with offline and online with the transaction based okay now uh, my next question is what are your tools for marketing marketing your products and going yeah. to more more clients sure sir uh, here i'm adopting the three levels of marketing to reach out the wider audience uh, of artists art collectors from home decor to large corporations if you look at in my slide 
we want to be participating in art fairs and uh, sorry uh, with art fairs like in the globally audience reach out to the where more population of art um, you know like audience coming into these art fairs and having partnerships with uh, artists auction houses art collectors and being an online platform we also want to do extensive digital marketing uh, to reach out to these audience so yeah, these my, are last the question, my last quick question is uh, uh, the uh, with the economy now you mentioned that with covid maybe there are opportunities what if somebody challenges you that the economy is going down, financial crisis, etc.? How do you respond to such a uh, question? Sure. I mean, here you see why now, uh, you know, COVID-19, you can look at my slide also, why I mentioned this, why now COVID-19 forced the world, like many other industries, to go digital uh, online. So art, uh, traditional galleries are shutting down. Uh, either they're going online, they are partners, partnering with, uh, you know, online galleries. Uh, this is an important and also last quarter, uh, this art online art registered 150% growth in the last quarter compared to the previous year. So I still believe uh, uh, there is a great room uh, for online art market, and that is com completely, you know, as uh, rapidly growing with the COVID-19. Thank you. Okay, um, a question from my side. Um, Hi, good, good to see you, Lourdes. <laughs> um, I um, wanted to know that Let's say for a campus like uh, like uh, DTEC, um, what would be in it for us? Uh, if, if you, and do you have a package deal for uh, a campus like uh, DTEC to exhibit your art? What can we earn money uh, through this uh, uh, through your sure. art as well? Yeah, Hans, it's a good question now because we already have partnership with uh, DoubleTree by Hilton in uh, Business Bay Bay Square. And they have a complete plaza area. We display all around the, you know, uh, place uh, in a hotel uh, where we are working on a, in a partnership with them. Like uh, it's contract, you know, if we sell the artwork from the region, you know, from the hotel, um, they take certain commission. Uh, that commission is mutual understanding because we've been there for four years. Normally, it vary from, uh, you know, fifteen percent, uh, uh, something like we are an example thirty. As I said, I shown you earlier, we take thirty-five percent commission. They take some part of it, 15%. And it's another advantage of being a hotel is because they're giving a new experience to their customers who are walking into the hotel by having a different artworks. So every time a new customer, every month turn up, we change it. You know, it's a new look and new uh, feeling, yeah. uh, you know, atmosphere. That's where more advantage than the money. That's how their feedback is for me. Okay. Well, maybe we need to talk then. <laughs> Definitely, Hans. I mean, I'm very interested. We initiated, but we never progressed. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. It happened. Thank you. Uh, one one quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, first, actually, it's a really brilliant speech, and I like the concept. Uh, uh, congratulations on coming this far. But when you mentioned about your competitors, so you made mention of the global co co competitors, but you being like one of the first in the Middle East and Africa gives you a lot of leverage. So my question is this, are you planning to go global? If yes, what is going to be your unique selling point to beat other competitors in the global market? Sure, it's a very good question. I mean, uh, if you look at art market globally, 64.1 billion, it's almost 60% uh, of this market in North America and Europe. So I had to go globally to gain the numbers or the expansion I need to do. So first question to answer, yes, we want to go globally. What is our unique selling point? As I said, uh, Two things we have not even won, uh, art rentals, which has never been uh, showcased uh, or never been uh, discussed about renting art. Uh, you know, this is something we want to uniquely sell it and to take it to the hospitality industry and uh, corporate clients. The second point is working with client, example, uh, uh, communities like, you know, example, I'm from Indian origin guy. Uh, I go to some of the uh, places in India that, that works, paintings would be showcased only from, I know that this is only from that region, nowhere else been showcased. Like in recently I visited to Nigeria, you know, I have found the artworks like the sculptures they make from Ibuni wood. This is only mostly known to Nigerians, not outside many people know. So I want to bring by partnering and empowering these artists into our platform and, you know, want to showcase to the world. So this is another unique selling point, not my competitors are doing, because I want to work with the communities and build them, empower them so that they can live, have a you know, good standard life. Thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Thank okay, so time is up. Let's move on to the uh, scoring of Art Smiley jury members. You can start scoring and please put done in the chat box.
thank you, jury members, and thank you, Mr. Lord, for the presentation. Let's move on to the fourth presenter, Wuzil, and it will be presented by Mr. Russell de Souza. Okay, can you please share your presentation? Yes, we can see it. Good luck and all the best. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Russell and I'm the founder of Wuzil, and we call ourselves the IKEA of the EPOS industry. So this is an EPOS system, and as you know, there are so many components involved in when you set up an EPOS system. It's a painful process. It is difficult to put together by a non-technical person, and it takes up a lot of time and effort for any layman to put the system together by themselves. In the 12 years that I have been in this industry, I have heard a lot of shop owners complaining and explaining the pain points about setting up an EPOS system and the amount of money they have to spend to get something started. In most situations, they have to launch, delay the launch of their shops. They have to compromise on the quality to get things within their budget. And they get confused with a lot of technical jargon that is thrown at them with, uh, by the sales experts and the so-called consultants. Basically, the shop owners are crying out for help. In essence, EPOS hardware as a self-service has not been exploited, much like furniture was pre-IKEA. In order to address this growing problem and this painful need for an easy to use solution, we have designed and manufactured the EBOID, which stands for easily bring on your device. As you can see, it's a four in one device. It's got a cash draw, a storage draw, a receipt printer and a label printer into a single integrated device. And it can connect with any Windows device with a, with a single USB cable. It is a completely out of the box solution and the EPOS and the shop owner can set up the system in three easy steps. We are giving a free POS software. It works with any other kind of POS software, including cloud softwares. It comes with its own barcode label printing software. And the best part is no tech experience needed. The EPOS is designed and manufactured in the UK. It is recyclable as 95% of the EBOID is made of steel and we are CE certified. So this is an example of an eboid in a retail environment and how it can be used. So this is uh, uh, the eboid with us, EPOS is easy. As you can see from this example, one of my customers are using it in the game shop. And on the right there, you can see he's printed a label and placed it on one of his products. So we believe we are the right place at the right time right now because the, uh, the physical and the online world is is, is merging and it's a, a new paradigm called five, five digital where internet businesses are moving offline to in terms of pop-up shops and offline businesses are moving online. We are good for entrepreneurs who want to embrace the DIY culture. We support all kinds of contactless payments. The increasing popularity of small format retailing, pop-up shops, kiosks, etc., makes the eBoy a value, value added proposition for them. It's affordable. And we cater to new retail business models, such as curbside pickup, uh, locker pickup, buy, or buy online, pay in store. So these are the new models, new retail models that are coming up. The eBoid is a good value proposition when compared to the other competing devices in the market from Star Empop and Elo Paypoint Plus. The main reason being is that it has an integrated label printer. It is a completely out of the box DIY, no technical experience required. It comes with its free software and prints uh, and, and can connect with any Windows device. Furthermore, our price point is very suited for the retail shop owner who is looking for a value added solution. So our business model is very profitable and recurring. We sell the eBoy starting from US dollar 482, uh, going up to US dollar 815. We have uh, we give them two two, lab, two types of label roles. These are proprietary label roles that work only on the eBoid and no other device. Uh, these label roles are packed in boxes of six and are sent to the shop owner to use. We also have cloud services and where the shop owners can use our cloud services to check reports and to connect several stores together. Looking at the big picture, our target market is the MENA and the APAC. And we will be targeting the top 10 countries of the Global Retail Development Index. In five years, we're looking at uh, obtaining $60 million in a service obtainable market out of a $3 billion 
dollar serviceable available market. Huge opportunities await the EPOS segment and especially the EBOID. You in the UAE, you have the Expo 2021 coming up next year, Qatar uh, FIFA 2022, a lot of good, huge mega projects happening in KSA in Saudi. India and Malaysia are also looking very, very attractive at this stage. We are targeting new shops, existing shops in the retail industry. We're targeting shops in the micro, small and medium segment. We are also looking into grow into restaurants, salons and spa and to cater to this growing industry. We want to use inbound and outbound marketing tactics uh, and focus it on the owners and managers of these shops and also to build channel partnerships with distributors globally and worldwide. Help us raise the bar. We want, we want to help the shop owners who are struggling. And for that, we're looking for an investment of $1.92 million, offering an equity of 15% at a $12.8 million valuation. We have several operational and manufacturing goals, but one of our key manufacturing goals is to research and develop and to move the manufacturing to UAE keeping in line with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's 2030 Dubai Industrial Mission. We um, intend- So much, Mr. Asa. I'm so sorry to cut you off, but time is up. Let's move on to the Q&A session. Mr. Calvin, would you like to uh, give the first question? Yes, I can go. So uh, nice pre pre presentation. Thanks for that. I was looking at your financial, uh, the amount of money you need and the valuation for the company. Yes. So what makes you value it at 12.8 million? Like what have you done so far that uh, makes the company to be valued at this uh, amount? So we uh, actually we launched post COVID and uh, based on the uh, market size and the, uh, at a 20% growth rate uh, predicted by the research consultants, we believe that we can achieve around uh, $31 million in revenue in year five. So we discount the cash flows to present value and we get around $12.8 million. So the, so the valuation is based on future metrics, not the current yes. reality. Yeah, uh, yes, based on future projected metrics from five years from now, bringing it down to current projections. Okay, thank you so much for that. I have a question uh, for you. Um, also, you know, good, good presentation. Um, so hitherto, uh, this market has been uh, concentrated um, by some huge companies. Uh, could you say something about your competition? And uh, uh, do you think they're going to attack uh, your business when you when you really get out there? Yes, uh, yes, we expect uh, the competition to take notice of us. Um, hence, we want to uh, invest uh, uh, a lot of, uh, invest the right amount of money into uh, channelizing our efforts into growth, uh, expanding into APAC as quickly as possible. Uh, one key advantage is that we consider ourselves also to be a full stack company, whereby we offer the hardware and the software and the cloud as a complete package. And this gives us a clear value advantage over pure play hardware companies and pure play software companies. And that's why we are calling ourselves as the IK of the EPOS industry, whereby a shop owner can come to us for a complete all-in-one solution um, and something that they can pick, off, pick up and do it themselves even without having to call any consultant or experts or value-added integrators to, you know, to, and pay them additionally to help them set up a, a system like this. Okay. And what is the split between uh, when I buy your solution, what part is, uh, is the software cost and what part is the hardware cost? So the soft, when you buy the eBoy, the software is free. When you buy the eBoy, the software is free, of course. You don't have to pay anything for the software. The only, only part is you have to pay, if you want our cloud services, then you pay additionally for the cloud services. Okay. So uh, there are two softwares we're giving free. It is the free POS software and the free label printing software. The label printing software, you can print the label, the labels with the barcodes. You can stick it onto the products. Uh, you can print the labels and even stick it on the shelves, you know, to show the item and et cetera. 
Um, so labels can even be printed for delivery information, like deliver to this customer and stick it on a product for delivery purposes. So the, the label printing is a key, key uh, value add that we, we had to put into the e-void. Okay. We have a few minutes left, Mr. Mohammed. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Russell. Uh, thank you for the presentation and the innovation. Uh, you mentioned in the presentation, unless I missed that, you mentioned the manufacturer of the of the equipment or the machine is a UK based, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Yes, uh, that's is right. it the only one? Is it the only one that's producing such a thing? Uh, now, do you consider yourself like when you deal with that company, like as a, a representative? Or, sorry, if, if I, if there was a misunderstanding in my part, if you can no. clarify. Yeah, so actually we are the owners of the IP. We are not reselling somebody else's product. Uh, we have outsourced the manufacturing to a manufacturing center in the UK. Uh, so this is our own IP. Uh, we own the, all the intellectual property associated with the product. Sure. Now in, in one of the slides, sorry, this is my quick question. In one of the slides, you mentioned the expansion in the market like Saudi Arabia and all of that. Yeah. I saw uh, some malls and you mentioned 1300 shops, do you expect all of them there they will adopt this thing or are you targeting a certain types of shops or businesses? Yes, we're targeting, uh, uh, our initial focus is uh, fashion, electronics, beauty, uh, those kind of shops. Uh, we found that our product is a very good fit for them because uh, the value proposition that we have to offer in terms of a label printer, a receipt printer and a completely integrated device makes more sense to them. Um, uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been getting a lot of inquiries for restaurants as well. So we're looking at uh, even uh, us, uh, actually our software already caters to restaurants. So it has the features for a restaurant system. So we just try, uh, we're trying to re uh, reposition ourselves in certain cases for restaurants as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. And thank you, jury members, for the question. Let's move on to the scoring session. Jury members, you can start scoring Woozle. Please type done on the chat box once done scoring. Thank you so much for waiting. Uh, Mr. Mohammed. I'd like to check if you are done scoring Wuzil. 
Yes, Sam. Yes, Sam. Yes, Sam. Yes, Sam. Okay. Thank you. Let's move on to the fifth uh, presenter. Sharabasi built environment studio to be presented by Ahmad Sharabasi. Please come on stage. Ahmad? Yes, yes, hello. How are yes. you? The floor is yours and uh, good luck. Thank you. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Borg. I'll be speaking on behalf of uh, Mr. Ahmed Sharabasi. Um, uh, I will represent uh, Sharabasi Built Environment Studio. Uh, we are an innovative uh, research based design studio and an educational institute. Our mission is to help children identify their passion since a very young age because we believe that children have huge potential and great uh, innovation that need to be discovered and well-developed. Uh, we have been uh, collaborating with creative festivals since uh, 2015, like Dubai Design Week and Abu Dhabi Science Festival, uh, where we witnessed and experienced great results and feedbacks from uh, school teachers and, uh, and parents. It was uh, um, an enriching experience, really. It was uh, so exciting to see the children uh, uh, express themselves and, 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 and see their, uh, their innovation and creativity. It was unbelievable. So right, uh, right here, I want to show you uh, a sample of our previous uh, workshops. Uh, all our workshops are based on design because we believe that the design is a very, very, very powerful tool with which one can, uh, can uh, express themselves and turn their ideas into real, uh, real uh, life projects. Right here, I want to show you the uh, vision behind our pitch because uh, we want to solve a problem that uh, most of us uh, experienced during the years of, the years of our education. Uh, it was mainly based on uh, books and studying for so many hours uh, just to get good grades. No one really cared uh, what, uh, what, uh, what you got and what you, uh, what, no one really cared about your input. Uh, so now we see education very differently. We see it as an experience where uh, the main focus is the children. We want to, to guide them and let them be more engaged and let, let them put their personal views and ideas. Okay. We intend to do so by, uh, by, um, by, by encouraging children to be more uh, creative and to use their, uh, their creativity uh, to become more independent because when you grow up and uh, you, you, you face the, the, the real world, uh, you discover that uh, you, you need to gain very, 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 very different uh, uh, experiences. From, uh, from, the one, uh, from the ones you, you gained at school. So um, we want to focus on, uh, on the, the um, experiential learning, the, uh, the hands-on projects, the problem solving, the critical thinking, the group projects, all of these uh, tools to help children become more, uh, more uh, independent and more, um, to gain more skills. Our target is, you know, we, we conduct uh, workshops so we, uh, we intend to keep on conducting workshops, but we want to uh, add uh, extracurricular activities to, uh, to schools and even integrate it in within the, the school programs. Like I'm uh, going to show you. Uh, we are going to use technology uh, because uh, this is the global uh, direction. Uh, Instead of, of uh, learning geography, the, the, the normal way through books and presentations, you can actually use uh, tools like VR and AR to, uh, to actually be there uh, to visit countries and learn about their, their culture and, and so on. Uh, as well as in biology and uh, chemistry, you can actually use the three printing technologies to, uh, to print uh, the organs and learn about the the, the human body. So our uh, next step or our next uh, uh, aim 
is to uh, to expand uh, using these technologies uh, through mobile apps and uh, and we also want to start uh, making virtual workshops not just uh, local not just physical workshops uh, by making virtual workshops um, it was mainly uh, inspired by the by the COVID, unfortunately, but uh, now we realize how important it is to to reach more people in a in a different way, uh, and and even let the children be more engaged with the, with the, with so many uh, other people, not just the ones around them, and uh, so this is our uh, next uh, step and our uh, expansion plan. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the presentation. Let me call on the jury members to be on stage. Um, who would like to give the first question? I can go first. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much for the presentation. And I think it's a very good idea, so we'll need it. Okay, now my question you. is, uh, now you, you touched upon COVID-19 and now it seems there are many schools, many institutions right now, they'll, they have distant learning. So now, yes. if, if the activities that you're talking about for the children and all of that is more of a skills building and et cetera, how are you going to be manage this through distant uh, learning or distant uh, I would say interaction? Unfortunately, it's not easy. We are still, um, we are still uh, looking for solutions. But uh, as I said earlier, um, we are only looking to uh, guide the children. We do not want to be imposing and telling them what to do. So it can be a lot easier now because we have uh, Zoom meetings. We have uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, tools that can, uh, that can um, uh, give us the chance to to monitor the children and I will I will be telling them and guiding them what to do and we will discuss and each each one will show and you can have a way of showing the, their output and, and their uh, and their uh, their final output you know what I mean so it, it's not gonna be as uh, as easy as uh, on personal uh, and physical uh, 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 sure. meeting and engagement but uh, there are there are many ways uh, that we can do it okay and my next question is are you targeting also the special needs uh, children those with disability or something are you having something in in that regard we, we haven't we haven't uh, talked about this first because we need to make sure that uh, our tools our uh, our um, our uh, new tools uh, will work on the on the on the basic level for uh, for basic and uh, and, and normal uh, individuals and then we can expand more but uh, for now no we we only intend to make it uh, for uh, for all the people not uh, not go not go there but my last question quickly is are all your skills and and learning tools and innovation is it dependent for you getting it is it your own or you are also bringing uh, you kind of like have a network with other uh, service providers no 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 we will need the service providers because uh, we we um, we are designers and architects, so we only have the vision and we will uh, need the uh, outsiders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a quick question. Uh, I didn't uh, quite catch your, your business model and how, how you are, uh, will make money on this. Maybe you could elaborate. Uh, because each... Uh, Yes, yes, of course. Uh, each uh, each of the workshop we uh, we make uh, in order to participate, you need to to pay the money. So this is how we gain. Uh, this is how we gain money. Each uh, each workshop has a different uh, fee and uh, based on the materials we use and and so on. Okay, okay, that's answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Well Calder. Yes, please. One quick question. Uh, who are your biggest competitors and how do you intend to stand out in the market? Uh, unfortunately, I can't really uh, give you a specific answer because uh, this is all, um, these are all new ideas. We haven't thought about uh, the technological uh, um, 
field until uh, until recently. We used to make uh, local workshops and uh, physical workshops. So now this is a whole new um, field that we need to uh, to look in more into it. So I can really give you answers about uh, about our competitors because we haven't really uh, gone uh, through with it. Uh, this is also new, Ian. That's it. Okay. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you, jury members, for the question and thank you for the presentation. Let's proceed with the scoring of Sharabasi Built Environment Studio. Please type in done once done scoring the startup. Thank you. Let's proceed Let's to the sixth presenter. I believe Mr. Muhammad is done scoring. Yes, done. Thank you. May, may I call on the sixth presenter, Tasdir, to be presented by Muhammad Belkit. Mr. Muhammad, please be on the stage. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Are you yes, good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Can you please share your presentation? Yes, the floor is yours and good luck. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, our project is a uh, express B2B platform. We start with a website, it's called tasdir.com. In Arabic, tasdir is mean export. We are focusing to connecting the exporter with the importer directly. Tasdir.com is, as I'm saying, is Express B2B platform. We built this website and we're going to make it as an application for Android and uh, Apple and all platform. Uh, this international wholesale trader uh, serving the exporters and the importers. And we try to put the new exporter in the market to provide him how we are going to make a company, small company size, and to be exporter for all uh, product in the world. For example, we having 
export opportunity from uh, over the world for the major product, uh, clothing, uh, building materials, and around 120 products and item, we are ready to provide the export opportunity on it. This will be in English and Arabic uh, uh, marketplace also to support the exporter in Middle East to attend the market. For example, we have here from Malaysia. This is our order export uh, orders coming to us. Around 100 is a container per year for uh, closing. This will be in UAE, in Emirates. This also rice and corn. It's also four containers per month. This also from Malaysia in Tanzania. It's also around 4,510 per month. I bought only five example for this one. And we have around 1,200 export opportunity from the, over the world to deliver to exporters and the manufacturers and produ uh, producers in uh, Middle East. We are trying my best, our best, to make a small website for the small business and uh, new exporters to attend the market, to increase the export level in any, in any countries. This is very uh, important for any government. This is uh, the first of the pages. You can see here the importer and the exporter. It will be English and Arabic. Here is the products. It's around 125 products. Here is the suppliers and manufacturers. And here's the deal. Here we'll put the export opportunities from over the world. As I'm seeing, we have around more than 1,200 export opportunities from the over the world for covering all products in the world. As I'm saying, it's all categories, food, beverage, and agriculture, fashion, business, uh, service, chemical. And here's top export opportunities. We have around for agriculture, around 343 export opportunity. For food beverage, we have around 208 export opportunity. The export opportunity is coming with full details about the specification, the importer's need, his mobile phone, his office number, uh, his office location. This is also our recommendation product for the new supplier. He can supply all of this. And this is our structure here. We have a team of marketing, targeting uh, free zone man manufacturers in free zone. Like for example, we have in free zone in Dubai and jobs around 1,000 and uh, more than 1,000 factory. They need to export their product to outside. We will support him and help him to find the right importer. And we'll be with him till closing the deals and he receiving his money and the important receiver is uh, receiving his goods. I'm trying to be fast because I have only five minutes. So I'm ready for any question. Thank you so much for the presentation, Mohammed. Let me call on the stage for our jury members. Um, the Mr. Uh, Mohammed or Mr. Hans, would you like to give the first question? I would, uh, I'm very interested what uh, this gentleman is doing. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, the, uh, I mean, there's a big value chain here. This is one of the more, most complex areas of business in the world. Um, how have you been able to align with uh, the value chain and all the bits and pieces that goes into it to fit into your, um, let's say, uh, system here? Have, uh, have you had mentors or who have you been able to create this with? Okay, now I'm working with uh, the commercial representative office in uh, all embassies in the world. I have a team connecting with him to bring the list of the importers from over the world. And we ask him every day, what is your requirement and what is your specification? For example, for from Egypt, they need to export around 500 ton of orange. What exactly the size you need? What exactly the quantities and packaging you need? Now we will go into contact with the supplier in Egypt, for example, they are exporting orange. Now we'll give him this opportunity and he work on it. 
We will succeed right now to close. We start only from eight months ago. We closing around 25 deals, succeed. Now for, yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, uh, it's more the, the technicality. So you, you, you get the information about the deal, but how can you physically uh, facilitate or execute the deal? That's what uh, I'm, I'm thinking, because there, there are bill of ladings, there are, yes, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we are we're staying with uh, between the exporter and the importer tool from beginning. We, we having to provide the bill of loading, uh, packaging list, uh, packaging item, customers is need certification, like for example, SGS, like ISO. We are logging to all details till the importer receiving his goods and the exporter receiving his money. Very interesting, very interesting, thank we you. We are trying to make the same uh, is doing of Alibaba. Alibaba is excused by, he, he's working in China. China is the biggest exporter in the world. That's why Alibaba is succeeded there. But we try to make the same in Middle East to uh -huh. find the exporter opportunities and importer directly with his contact number directly. And we'll make sure they have his specification cleared and the exporter got his money. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think this is very interesting. And by the way, in the line of business that I work, because we do trade and we do uh, export trade and insurance. So my question is, uh, uh, this transaction, you're just only getting a fee or actually you are purchasing and reselling? Uh, are you a financier? Are you just only a, uh, do you take only on transaction based? Uh, actually, sir, we are getting the export opportunity from the directly importer. From, for example, if in, uh, from Malaysia, I got one export order to transfer to for, for uh, uh, 500 ton bare months of garlic, Egyptian garlic. Now okay. I'm getting this export opportunity and I'm going to the biggest supplier of garlic in Egypt, three of them. Now you, I have this order. You can go direct and dealing with the importer or if you cannot, because some, we can, some facing some problem with a new exporter. He cannot speak English well. He don't know the process of export from beginning how he makes the invoice, how he makes the performance invoice, how he will ask for the ISO certificate, health certificate, SGS. He doesn't know this. So we will support him to close his deal and support him also for the packaging, what exactly is important and is need the packaging, and transferring everything to the ship inside the container. Once the container is done, will send the bill of loading, all document to the importer to release the money by LC or SPLC or whatever uh, the agreement of the payment. But so in, in a way you are a facilitator, you're a connector, you're providing the service between the two parties. Exactly, exactly. We are oh. targeting the exporters, manufacturers, producer, traders, wholesaler, and sure. we are focusing to increase the export level in, uh, in the country because it will be strong in the economy of any country to increase the export level. Thank you. Mr. Calvin, do you have any questions? Yes, one quick question. Uh, actually, I like the, the whole idea and uh, thanks for the presentation. It was quite clear. Uh, my question is who takes, care of, who takes care of the delivery? Is it you or the manufacturer? The manufacturers. The manufacturers. Because I have to make a contract with the manufacturing according to the specification of the importers. So I have to make the all responsibility according to the exporter directly. He will make the packaging, he will make the delivery, he will make the cargo, but I'm following with him to solve any problem in process. Hmm, okay. He's closing the deal. Nice. Ooh, sorry, one final question. So from, from all you explained now, I see a lot of back and forth and manual, manual work. How do you plan to automate all of this through this platform you're building? Now we're working in websites. We have uh, we put a lot of export opportunity every day from uh, different items and different categories. And now we have also some services like we have a study cases to the new exporter how he can log into any market. For example, we have how he can log into the uh, China market, how he can log into Canada market, how he can log into the Middle East uh, market. Also, we have some service for the foreign people. And for example, I'm from Egypt, I'm living here in Dubai. 
and I know exactly what is my country export item. For example, orange, uh, uh, onion, garlic. So also for some people here and living in Dubai from India, so you know exactly what the, the India country is are going to export. So just going to the market, speak to the, to the traders and the wholesaler and ask for the specification, clear specification, put it in our website and we'll find three supplier of them. Thank you, Mohammed. Time is up. Thank you so much for the presentation and thank you for the questions, jury member. Let's move on to the scoring session. Please drop a message, John, in the chat box once done scoring. Thank you. Thank you so much. May I call on the seventh presenter, Iziesta, to be presented by Mahamud Raga. Please come on stage. Mr. Mahmoud? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please share your presentation on the screen. Yeah, sure. Is it clear now? Yes, we can see it. The floor is yours and good luck. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Mahmoud Ragab. Uh, today, I'll present to you Isista. Uh, Isista is a tech startup focusing on solving people's daily life pains by tech. We are focusing currently on safety because safety of families and people we love is the most important thing. And this takes us to home safety. One of the biggest dangers facing homes is gas leaks. Isista also started with the story. One day, me personally and my family left home at 8 a.m. When we returned it back at 4, we switched it on a light and the home went on fire. We found it later that there was a gas leak from the main odometer and it was waiting for any single spark to start a fire. Searching in the market for solutions, we found many gas detectors, but they had a common mistake, which is false alarms. False alarms is a huge issue. 
it actually occurs 750,000 times every year in USA alone. We have worked for two years of R&D and we have built Rasmo. Rasmo is proudly the most accurate false alarm-free gas leak detector and protector. Rasmo is unique because it comes with 20% more sensitive to gas leaks. It is three times louder and three times more accurate than any other variant in the market. It comes with an automatic valve shutdown motor that can close the gas handle automatically in case of a leak. And it's powered by a battery powered plug that can keep the device on even if electricity shuts out. It uses a unique technology we call it the echo check technology in which it collects data from the air around the main unit and it analyzes the data and it decides if this is a real leak or just a fluctuation of data because of the high temperature or change in humidity, which are the main causes of false alarms. For our revenue sources, we have two, uh, two models, uh, selling the device itself and selling maintenance parts, period. The device comes in one category, the main device with the alarm, uh, which is the alarm, and it comes with the auto shutdown motor and the battery power plug. For the maintenance, uh, specific parts must be changed every six months for restaurants or every 12 months for homes, and they cost no more than $15. We also have another revenue model, which is licensing the patent to major manufacturers like KDM Fair Seller in USA. For our soft launch plan, we are planning to sell in the USA, uh, in, in UAE, sorry, um, with homeowners and uh, real estate builders and restaurants B2B. This will require hiring a couple of employees and building a steel mold, which without it, we cannot build the plastic casing for the device. Then we will prepare some inventory and prepare for launching in USA. We understand the market and this will require us uh, a fund of $500,000 for a 12 month runway. We understand the market in the USA is 50 million homes with gas in systems installed. We will plan to sell five to 500,000 homes. This will require us a fund of $10 million over the course of three years to uh, achieve this plan and with a net profit of expected $10 million. We are accredited by ESMA and tested by the UL Laboratory Labs. About the team, I'm a safety engineer with a background in business. I've joined several training programs like the American University in Cairo and the American University in Georgia. I've also been a vast investor in car trading business, and I'm a self-learner. I learn whatever it takes to build a business from developing Android apps, websites, photography, and whatever. My co-founder, Omar, is a mechanical engineer. He is pursuing his master's degree, and he has headed inspection of major medicine factories in Egypt and headed the site's operations in military construction field in Egypt before joining us as a chief operating officer. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad, for your presentation. May I call um, you? You're welcome. I would like just to share the video I have told you about. Okay, so, no problem. We have uh, time? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm just out of submission. Please don't forget to click on the uh, computer sound button. Thank you. Just let me know if the sound is, can you hear the sound? One moment. Say it again, please. Yeah, okay, so it should be working now. Introduce the most accurate false alarm-free gas leak detector. It comes with an auto valve shutdown motor and a battery pack powered plug to keep GASMO on whatever happens. How it works? Whenever a gas leak occurs, GASMO detects and analyzes the air data. Using the AccuCheck technology, it makes sure there is a real leak before it beeps with its three times powerful buzzers. Its motor shuts down the gas handle automatically in case of a leak. From Izista. Easier life. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. All right, um, let's move on to the Q&A session. Who would like to give the first question? Mr. Hans? I have a quick question. Um, thank you for that. That was, a, you know, that last video clip really sounded like a, a big professional company is in, in the US. Uh, congratulations to that. Um, thank you who, who has the uh, IP on this product? Is that entirely yours or can somebody uh, else use the IP and and be your competitor 
Yeah, so the AcroCheck technology on IP, we have developed it over the course of two years of our, and we didn't register it as a patent because registering it will allow it to be published directly on the US patents website. So this will um, uh, make us in danger of getting copied by Chinese factory and we can never go back after them. So uh, currently it's a secret and we are not going to issue an IP for it. Uh, without this technology, the devices uh, cannot work to be false alarm free. And also um, uh, this is um, uh, programmed and uh, manufactured by us. So we are not outsourcing it uh, and sharing our secret sauce. Thank you. Okay, I, I can go next if you allow me. Yes, please. Yes, okay. Thank you, Mohammed, for the good presentation and uh, good good solution. Now, just to follow on, on Thank Hans' you. The question. Um, just, uh, I, I'm Mahmoud, just to correct. Oh, sorry, Mahmoud, yes, my, my, my apology. No. Just to follow on the question of, uh, of uh, Mr. Hans. Now, um, you mentioned something about the US, uh, the numbers. So you are going to expand from UAE to the US, if I understand? Yeah, so our main goal uh, is to launch in the USA. While we are operating in the UAE, because here, you know, the, uh, the taxes are very low and the electronic government uh, makes it very easy to deal with uh, importing electronics and stuff like that. So manufacturing here is a lot easier and a lot uh, less costful than manufacturing in USA itself or in, even in Egypt. Um, and the, the mindset of the Americans is very high in terms of safety. And these devices is like gadgets for them. If you enter Amazon, you'll find a lot of similar devices and the people buy all sorts of these detectors online. So yes, USA is our main, uh, uh, main uh, advantage or main, uh, main market. While we here in the UAE, we're working on partnering with uh, real estate companies and uh, governments, like uh, we have partnered here with uh, the Charge of Prevention uh, and Safety uh, Authority from the Charge of Government Office. And uh, we are working with them uh, to uh, inspect homes against gas leaks. But we believe our main, main market is the U.S. Because uh, just a follow up, I, I lived in the U.S. and usually households, mostly they rely on electricity over there. Or again, although I'm not an expert in there, but because I lived in there for a long time. Uh, just my yeah. last question, my, my final question is, uh, by the way, this device or this technology, is it can be uh, kind of detected from remote or just only physically in the house itself? What can be from remote? No, currently we don't offer it in our, our wireless version. Uh, this is our first uh, uh, production version. And um, we have uh, this uh, to be added as a feature in the next uh, versions to be introduced uh, within uh, two next years. Thank you. You're most welcome. All right, uh, can I go now for a question? Yes, Mr. Kevin. Nice, thank you. Uh, nice presentation and I really like the concept but my question is about uh, your go-to-market strategy. How do you intend to launch this to the market? Because now it's like a, it's a bit of a secret, but at the same time, you are going to launch to the market and you need a lot of uh, audience in terms of your market and stuff like that. So what is your go-to-market strategy? Yeah, so the secret is in the uh, IB and the technology, how the device works. But the device itself, using it, does not reveal the secret. So if I sell the device to you, you can never know how it will work. Um, or how we are willing to go to the market, we are going on two chapters. The first is trying to deal with governments, as we are doing here with the Charger government, to uh, try to implement this as an obligatory device so people can uh, be forced to it, and this will be a revenue stream. The other one is we know the US market have the high safety mind, so we are planning to launch like an offline campaigns uh, tech events, um, uh, offline trade shows, and uh, dealing with the uh, like the housing associations in the USA. There is a lot of housing associations that we can deal with, and uh, they can take the commission on the top of selling these devices. Nice. And for sure, selling online like on Amazon. All right, good. That answers my question. Thank you. Most welcome. We have one minute left, Mr. Hans. Do you have a quick question? No, I'm fine. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Thank I, you. I can yes. just follow a quick one. Since you mentioned, uh, Mahmoud, that you will be selling online, then how are you going to provide the service? Because again, as you mentioned, 
the technology يعني you have you have to yourself serve it or utilize it or make it active. Yeah, so we have a full operations plan because we are willing to uh, uh, start manufacturing it ourselves. And we are putting in the business plan that we are going to build a facility in which we will be producing the device here. Um, manufacturing it is not hard because it doesn't require a lot of equipment. We get the PCBs ready from China and equipments, uh, co components, electronic components from the USA. They come all soldered together. So what we do here really is programming testing and packaging the device, which is not a, a, a real hassle. Thank you. Most welcome. Thank you so much, Juris, and thank you, Mahmoud, for your presentation. Let's move Most on welcome. to the scoring session. Juris, you may now start scoring is Yesta. Please type done on the chat box once done scoring. Thank and, you. And um, I'm sorry, it is Isista. Isista. Yes. Mohammed, are you done scoring? I, I, I think I ran into a problem, you know, okay, because I, I, I kind of lost that page with the company. So maybe you may continue. I don't want to delay you. I'll join you in a minute. Okay, thank you. Let's because move. somehow I went to the companies, but then the, the page disappeared and it took me somewhere else. Sorry. 
No problem. And usually you're facing, you can drop the message in the chat and the AIM team would be able to help you out. Sure, thank you. Um, I, I had the same problem, but I just had to, uh, let's say, um, how do you say, press the refresh and then log in back in and then it worked. Oh. Yes, something happened, that, happened to me also. That's what I tried to do and somehow I'm still, uh, it gives me errors or something like that, you know. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. No problem. Okay, let's move on to the eighth presenter, Interact Labs, to be presented by Mr. Samir. Please come on stage. Hello, yes. everyone. Hi, good afternoon. Please uh, share your screen. Can you see it now and can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you clearly and we can see the presentation. The floor is yours and good luck. Great, thank you. So welcome everyone. My name is Mohammed Samir. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Interact Labs. So we mainly develop hardware and software products that makes the whole collaborating experience more engaging and fun. So we may feel bored, disconnected, engaged in our meetings and our sessions when we, when we use lecture methods. Studies have shown that when we use lecture methods, we can only retain 5% of the information delivered, which hinders collaboration and engagement. While when people collaborate, even with the simplest tools, magic happens. And that's why I'd like to introduce to you our product tag. It's a device that transforms any huge monitor to be fast and accurate interactive surface for collaboration, whether the surface was a TV screen or even a projected wall. You just plug the detector into your computer USB port and point the detector towards a monitor, such as the TV screen, as I said, or a projector on a wall, and then your new surface is completely interactive. So you can use visual aids, interactive applications, access internet, record lessons, work on Microsoft programs such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF. Only, also, you can play with visual experiments and so on. And just about any computer application you control with a mouse. And also it supports e-learning. So there may be the other uh, products in the market such as smart boards, touch screens, and interactive projectors. But what makes TAG different actually is more durable. It doesn't include electronic, board, electronic surfaces that are easily damaged with wear and tear. It, all, it also transforms up to 150 inch interactive surface which is a very huge area, almost three, three meters width and two meters height. And also it works and compatible with any type of projectors and any type of TV screens and any type of software. Last but not least, it costs less than half the price of an electronic board. We sell the kit for only $300. The kit includes the detector and two electronic styluses and three years warranty. We also add 15% margin for sales and after sales and maintenance uh, uh, services. We also offer after affiliate partnership programs to offer complementary products such as screens, projectors, and PCs and other accessories. We have clients in more than seven countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Denmark, Morocco, USA, Spain, and France. Uh, and also our clients include universities, schools, NGOs developing education, and corporates in their meeting rooms which we have sold almost 500 kits and generated $150,000 in revenue. And we have 70% multiple repeat customers, which means customers who buy kits year after year to fulfill their capacity. And we have 70% gross margin, uh, which means 30% cooks. And this percent would also be better with economies of scale. So currently we are negotiating with more than 30 potential customers and we hopefully we will be uh, partnering with an authorized partner in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, and we are uh, closing it uh, this uh, quarter uh, and we will be launching our next product it's called Pendu uh, the first quarter next year. So Pendu is an enhanced stylus that enables you to remotely control your screen without having to touch the screen. It, it works with tag to add to it a greater functionality, but also work as a standalone device. Pendu is like a gesture controller, a clicker, and an air mouse all in one styles. We aim to launch Pendu on a crowdfunding campaign next year, 
uh, hopefully to be able to sell 100 and, uh, 1,500 uh, tax kits and 2,500 pendo devices next year, generating half a million dollars in the avenues. So actually, the market is huge. The interactive display market is expected to reach $13.8 billion by 2024. And the market for the projectors and PCs in Saudi Arabia next year is expected to reach $150 million. So this is the team behind Interact. We are uh, seven full-time uh, members, uh, and we have combined experience over than 20 years in technical development, hardware distribution, marketing, and project management. And we are four co-founders. Two of them are silent partners. So uh, we actually have also uh, gained some uh, recognition and awards from different institutes, especially from some accredited entities such, uh, such as Intel, which shows how our product is qualified and verified. And, and to be able to reach our goals, we are uh, raising four, $400,000, $400, mainly to be spent on research and development team expansion and marketing. So that's it, thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation, Samir. Let me invite the three members to be on stage. Yes, Mr. Hans, would you like to give the first question? Well, I first have to think about my question. <laughs> I'll let uh, uh, maybe Ke uh, Kelvin or uh, Mohammed say something I can first. go first. It's fine. Thank you. The really nice presentation. Uh, I, 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 I like it. Congratulations for coming this far. Uh, I have two major questions. So one is about uh, your competition. Who in the market is currently doing like similar stuff and what makes you stand out? So again, there are different alternatives in the market. If we're talking about the indirect competition, I mentioned smart boards, touch screens, and interactive projectors. And if we're talking about direct competition, there are only two startups in the USA, which one is called TouchJet and other is called UBI. And what, what makes TAG different actually from these devices is, uh, as I said, it's compatible with any type of TV screen and any type of projector. Other devices works only uh, either with TV screens or either with projectors. And also the quality of the product uh, and, and the quality means the time response, how fast uh, it responds to your uh, action or movement, and also accuracy to control even the small icons on your screen uh, on an area up to 150 inch interactive screen. So uh, this actually makes stack different from the other direct competitors. Nice. That's cool. Thanks for that answer. Then my second question is about Pen Pendu, the one you want to launch. You said yeah. it would be like remote con controller. So my, my question is, is it going to be based on Bluetooth infrared that has a, a range limit? Or is this something that can be used for, let's say, virtual meeting where I have to be at my home and with the controller, I can just be controlling what is happening on the screen of my audience? So actually, it's it's both. Uh, so it's a control unit that enables you to control not only your computer or monitor, but also all the IoT devices because it can control uh, through the internet. So the the pen it includes the infrared uh, uh, lead, which enables you also to control all the infrared devices uh, uh, beneath you or or beside you. Uh, so Pendu, actually, as I said, it can work with TACT to add to it a greater functionality of remote controlling, but also it can work as a standalone device. That's really brilliant. Thank you so much for, for the answer. So Samir, is, uh, sometimes uh, when a product has many applications, it's difficult to, to focus. Uh, and it seems like this, uh, this is a gadget uh, that can be used in a very versatile way. Uh, are there any of the applications that you think stands out that that's going to be uh, uh, the reason why people buy this product? So thank you for the question. Actually, as you said, TACT is uh, a more an activity-oriented, more than a segment-oriented product. So it can fit with different segments. But actually, we are focusing on the main two uh, segments that have the potential and have the awareness for using the product, which is education in schools. So it's an alternative for the smart board. So it's like a virtual smart board without having an electronic board that can be damaged 
with wear and tear or misusage. So they can use it in education, whether in class or for e-learning, as I showed you in the video. So the teacher can now interact with their presentation, can make annotation, they can use visual experiments, and also everything can be live streamed through Zoom to their attendees, whether uh, uh, offline or even in the same classroom online. Uh, the other application is the, in corporates and in, in meeting rooms in businesses because instead of just uh, presenting a PowerPoint presentation and, and clicking next, now you can control your presentation directly through the monitor without go going forward and backward from the laptop and the screen. And also you can save all your uh, uh, comments or the MOM minutes of meetings to, sh to be shared with the attendees and you can control even 3D models and other applications that you want to use uh, for your presentation. It's also compatible 100% with Microsoft tools. So it makes it easier for uh, uh, businesses to uh, adopt uh, our technology. Very good, thank you. Um, uh, Samir and the colleagues, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I missed part of the presentation because I was trying to fix the problem. But just a question, uh, at least. Now, is, there, is this um, uh, has anything to do with the availability of uh, what you call activity like Wi-Fi, or it, it works without it? Uh, uh, is it dependent on any kind of like support system? Can it be used in any home without any or any place without having support systems? So actually uh, the, the system should include uh, a monitor, whether a TV screen or a projector on a wall even. Uh, and so you can transform this monitor to be interactive. You don't have uh, uh, to get a Wi-Fi or an internet connection. It can work perfectly in homes, also for children uh, to use it uh, to draw or paint or do their homework on any uh, normal wall. So actually it's, it's only a device and a pen and that's it. So when the pen uh, uh, touches any screen or any surface, it emits infrared light as you can see now. So once you, once you press uh, the pen on any surface, it emits infrared light, and then the device detects the coordinates and the position of the pen and transforms it to the computer to move the mouse on the same exact point. So actually, this this is done uh, in almost zero uh, 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 zero seconds, uh, which enables you to control uh, uh, your computer or your monitor uh, uh, in in a very normal way as you're using a mouse. Okay, thank you very much, Sami. All right. Um, uh, is there any other questions from the jury? Okay, time is up. Let's move on to the scoring session. Thank you, Samir, for your presentation. Mm -hmm. And thank you, for jury members. Please type done and the chat box once done scoring. Thank you.
Thank you so much, three members. Good. Done, okay, thank you. Let's move on to the last presenter, but not the least, Miss, to be presented by Kaula Takala. Yes, we can share your screen, the floor is yours, and to unmute yourself, good luck. Ms. Kaula, please unmute yourself and you can start. I apologize. So sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And I hope the jury is not too tired to hear me out now. Um, well, my name is Kaula Hamad. I am the founder and CEO of Takellam. I am a, an Emirati social entrepreneur based in Abu Dhabi. Takellam Online Counseling is a digital solution for uh, mental well-being. Why mental health? Well, before COVID, we ran an, uh, an, an analysis uh, for the region and we realized that there is uh, a need in the market, something that's more convenient, something that's more approachable, something that's more uh, customized for the amount of demand uh, in the region. So in the UAE, the UAE has the highest um, percentage of depression in the region. And the region overall has the highest uh, rates in the, in the world. Um, so after COVID uh, comes um, the next pandemic, which is a mental health crisis as we see it coming uh, as the aftermath. So uh, we notice a lot of initiatives coming up. We notice uh, a change in the landscape, in the market investment, and in, in the downloads on, on these similar apps. So the problems we're solving are mainly the upcoming uh, global pandemic, which is the uh, mental health crisis, as well as the pre-COVID uh, causes or problems that were uh, part of the strategy basically to tackle the stigma that is associated with mental health and lack of awareness uh, because of the logistics, the lack of time and affordability of uh, seeking mental health uh, therapy. So Tekellam is uh, an online counseling platform that connects uh, individuals, organizations with mental health professionals uh, through a very convenient and personalized digital experience using audio, video, and uh, instant live messages with the option of anonymity, given the stigma that is uh, very big in the region. Our mission also is, is to, to promote and, and to create awareness, obviously, about the importance of mental well-being. The features of the platform, what we're trying to do is to disrupt the traditional therapy that's happening right now. So things should be more accessible, things should be more uh, customized and personalized and approached in a, in a way that the person doesn't feel that they're sick for seeking uh, mental health therapy. So the whole experience, uh, is tra we're trying to transfer that to become uh, online. The minute uh, from scheduling, uh, booking, uh, booking the, um, the appointment, the communication aspect, um, finding the counselor, the filtration system, the content, even matching with the right counselor that uh, uh, suits the person's need happen on the platform. The other aspect, which is the uh, innovative technology that we're going to use is in the online assessment by diagnosing and uh, having a progress tracker using an AI and machine, machine learning uh, technologies. This is how the uh, platform looks. You basically, it's a very easy user experience, trying to keep it as easy as possible for the uh, user to encourage them to, uh, to seek help. So sign up, choose a counselor, book your session, on, or you can start right away. You get to see the list of counselors and for the counselors themselves or the psychologists, they have a back end system where they see a dashboard and they can manage and control their clients and their schedules. We are the only, uh, the first and the only actually platform in the region as of for now, offering customized localized on online counseling with an AI driven experience to track progress to both individuals and organizations. Our business model uh, depends on take rates and a subscription uh, offered to clinics and organizations. Our strategy is to start right now, actually, we have a pilot project running with Saha in Abu Dhabi, and we are catering to 13,000 uh, users at the moment, uh, starting with, with the UE, obviously, our focus uh, market, and then we scale up to GCC, MENA, 
reaching out to Arabs uh, and Western countries and, and Europe and the US. Uh, the leadership team is myself. Uh, I have an international experience between private and uh, government entities holding senior positions. And I have a background in media and communications. My graduate degree uh, from Georgetown University in Washington, DC. Uh, my, uh, my COO, um, uh, she, she has a, again, a similar experience, more operational with a PMP uh, certification. We both have combined of 25, uh, 25 years of experience. Hopefully we get to thousand one time. And our team is basically a combination of uh, the majority are psychologists and uh, the, the rest is a technical team uh, that is in, in house. Our advisory committee is carefully selected and there are uh, uh, individuals who are senior in the community and in their professions. Uh, the most important um, uh, to addition to our uh, startup is Dr. Joanne, who is the president of the Middle East uh, Psychological Association. So she gives us direction on how to approach the overall MENA region. The company is right now set up in Abu Dhabi, licensed by uh, ADGM, and we are part of the DOH team at uh, Tech Hub 71. And we're part of uh, Dubai uh, Startup Hub, Georgetown Alliance um, Entrepreneurship Alliance. We are the first company or startup to join Zaid University's incubator. We've been featured on Smashy TV, and we have been uh, showcased and presented at uh, Step Anywhere. The ask Thank is the fifty thousand so dollars. Um, Carla, to... I'm sorry to cut you off. Go but... ahead. No, it's fine. This is the last slide, anyways. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so let's move on to the uh, Q and A session. Um, uh, I'd like Mr. Muhammad. Do you have the question for Ms. Kawala? Sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kawala. Uh, very, very, very innovative, and I think it's timely. I think you, you. everybody now is talking about COVID-19, okay, right. and post-COVID-19. Uh, so again, uh, do you see that uh, the solutions that you will be offering post-COVID-19 will be different than before COVID-19? And uh, what kind of any specific, uh, any quick, quick areas? Honestly, um, so the, the idea before COVID started really just to offer something convenient, right? Something that... Uh, basically to encourage people to seek mental health therapy and create awareness around it. As uh, the COVID kicks in, um, our whole strategy shift, uh, the demand has increased. We noticed like uh, there is a huge gap in the market right now, given after the lockdown and, and the quarantine, the need has become and became actually uh, bigger. So we've been approached by several entities, by organizations, by employers who noticed that mental well-being is becoming important to their employees who've been, you know, going through burnout, who've been working nonstop from home. The idea of reintegrating again, uh, working from office environment. So there is a lot in the, in the mindset that has changed and COVID has raised awareness about mental well-being. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, my next question is, sure. uh, if I go to the business model, let me pick on the financial business model. Now, how are right. you going to operate this business from a financial point of view? So the majority of the financials are going to the technology right now. And um, we are all unpaid. We're all like committed uh, either on a volunteer basis, sweat equity or internships. Um, but we have 50% of the team is, is, uh, is full time. Um, so the, the priority is to focus on the technology itself. And we aim as we um, move forward and notice the, uh, the, um, the interest coming from government entities. We think that we will be able to secure our first um, uh, client or um, a revenue generating um, project before the end of the year. So we currently look at uh, reinvesting everything in the technology as a priority to make sure that it's the most optimal solution uh, offered in the market. Thank you, Khaled. You're welcome. Yes, Mr. Hans, do you have a question? Yeah, I think um, I, I'm very impressed, Khaled, uh, and uh, I think this is uh, very, uh, 
important thing you're doing. Um, it's uh, similar to actually what my sister is doing in Switzerland. Mm. Um, and um, I, I would, uh, but as, as Mohammed said, you know, the, it, it wasn't entirely clear to me what, how you're going to make money out of this. Uh, there is a lot of money that, to, that, that is uh, to be made here. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I would, I would right. just right. hope, hope I, you, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I'm, I apologize if I, maybe I misunderstood the question. So the business model, basically how we're gonna make money. We intend to work uh, directly with a psychologist or professional mental health uh, um, individuals who uh, are gonna deliver the sessions. Our take basically is 20% of each session delivered. Um, this is one model. The other model is a subscription based for clinics as we realize this is the preferred method of getting involved with us. So mm -hmm. it's an annual or a monthly subscription based and uh, same applies to organizations. Okay. By the way, we would love to uh, see you here in DTEC. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love to. We're actually going to set up soon in, uh, in Dubai. So I I'd love to explore more. Excellent. We need you in Jeddah also, okay? <laughs> Inshallah, Akid. We actually started talking to our uh, embassy in Riyadh to to explore now expanding right away in, in, uh, in Saudi, Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kelvin, do you have a quick question? Uh, yeah, one quick one. Uh, I cannot hear you, Kelvin. Can you hear? Hello? Yes. Hello, can you hear now? I don't know if it's just me or yes. can anyone hear him? I can hear him. I can hear him. I can hear him clearly. You still can't hear? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, Thank you. good. Sorry about that. No, uh, my right. presentation, actually, Thank I like you. the whole uh, idea and, and business model. It makes a lot of sense. So my quick question is about the technology. So uh, you said like you're going to raise money to advance the, te the technology you guys are using. So my mm -hmm. question is, what, uh, what, like, what have you built so far in terms of technology? And what specific tech, technology infrastructure are you looking at to invest 50k in? Okay, good question, Calvin. So right now we have our prototype. It's a website. It's up and running, uh, like I said, uh, to 13,000 uh, users. Um, and then a part of our investment has gone into the app. Uh, the app is almost ready. However, there are certain features that we would like to integrate, uh, which require additional investment. Um, the main one, honestly, uh, to be able to operate smoothly with the uh, hospitals and clinic is to integrate an EMR system with Cerner. So that is on our uh, priority for now. Uh, we have our own uh, technical team, like I said, developers, uh, data scientists, so that's not an issue, but we, we need, um, you know, to upscale those skills and get uh, the right resources to implement an EMR system, basically. Nice. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Kala, for the presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you jury members. Me. So let's proceed to the scoring now, jury members. Please drop done in the chat box once uh, done scoring Miss Paula presentation for, for Takala.
with that final presentation from Takalam, we have now come to the end of the pitching session for today's competition. Allow us to take a quick break, one minute break, while our jury members and organizers tally up the final overall scores for the competition. The overall winner and national champion for Dubai will be announced after the one minute break. Please stay tuned until the end of the event today. Welcome back to the closing segment of the Dubai chapter of the AIM Startups Virtual Pitch Competition. Let us now invite all jury members back on the stage. Um, okay, so we would also like to inform, before announcing the winners, we'd like to inform the startups that do not win from today's competition will have a second chance to be featured at AIM, and that is through our second segment, Global Technopreneurs. For further details of the said competition, please visit our website at www.aimcongress.com. And now for the much awaited moment. Overall, I think we have a very competitive pool of contestants today and all participants are amazing in their own way and have demonstrated their respective strengths and unique propositions in the sectors they operate in. Without further ado, I would like to have the honor to announce the overall winner for the Dubai chapter of the AIM Startup Virtual Pitch Competition. The winner for Dubai Virtual Pitch Competition 2020 is Izesta by Mr. Mahmoud Raga. Mr. Mahmoud. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor and I've been uh, I'm very glad to attend and to talk to uh, the respective uh, juries and all of you. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again, Iziesta and Mr. Mahmoud for presenting your project. We are very proud for you to represent Dubai at the final AIM 2020 Global Startups Champions League in Dubai later this year, that would be on October 20 to 22nd. My With that in sure. mind, thank you once again to all the jury members, contestants, and members of the organizing team for being part of today's competition. 
On behalf of the co-organizer DTEC, we would like to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to the AIM team and the UAE Ministry of Economy for the opportunity to host the Dubai chapter of the AIM Startups Virtual Pitch Competition. The annual investment um, meeting is still scheduled to take place as, like I said, 20th to the 22nd of October 2020. So for more updates on the latest developments of the annual investment meeting event, please stay tuned to www.aimcongress.com. For you, everyone... Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Can we get the mails of the uh, respected uh, juries so we can maybe get more advices and learn more from them? Please uh, drop us an email about your concern, Mr. Mahmoud. Sure. Yes, thank you. So for everyone's information, a replay of today's event will be made available on the Annual Investment Meetings YouTube channel in due course. Thank you once again and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank all you. And congratulations, Mr. Mahmoud. Thank you. My pleasure. We wish you all the best. Thank and you very much. Thanks to all the other uh, competitors. Thank you to all. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay.